Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe, and I'm so glad you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And today's message is brought to you through the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit and presented with love and kindness. And today's message is about bearing fruit and the fruits of the Spirit, and they go hand in hand, and we'll look into that today. So if you brought your Bibles today, please turn to the book of Mark, chapter 16, and we'll read verses 15 and 16. And this is Jesus talking. And he said to them, Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And so, brothers and sisters, this is called the Great Commission. And you and I, if you're saved today, if you believe that God sent his only begotten Son to come from heaven, incarnated in human form, to die for your sins and mine, was buried and rose to heaven to put to death death and we can live forever and ever with our Lord and Savior and you've repented of your sinful ways, you've made proper changes in your life to please God and do His will, you have the Holy Spirit in you. Amen? Amen! But brothers and sisters, it's our duty, responsibility and God's request and demand Demand, brothers and sisters, that we bear fruit, that we preach the gospel, that we minister to others, to bring them to Christ. Now, brothers and sisters, you're not going to preach and share the gospel with everyone you meet. If you have the Holy Spirit, who is the overseer of the church, and he guides and directs us in all ways and all things, he will let you know who God has drawn and who needs you to speak out on his behalf and help the brother or sister to get to salvation or continue their walk with the Lord, whatever case it may be. So let's look at another passage. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we'll read verse 6. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So this is Paul talking, and he's saying, I planted, he planted the seed. So he went somewhere where they didn't know about Jesus. He preached the gospel to them. He preached Jesus to them and how they needed to be saved. And probably said a prayer of righteousness, a prayer of repentance to the people so they could get saved. And told them they need to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And probably baptized them. But then he would turn it over to Apollos, and in some cases Titus, maybe Timothy. And they would water the plant. They would share the gospel. The gospel is the whole New Testament. The first four books is the gospel of Jesus. And it's the only way to get saved. The gospel teaches us how to live and walk in Jesus. Amen? Amen. And remember, it's our responsibility to water the plant. Water, but here it says, God gives the increase. And that is the Holy Spirit. God will fill that person with the Holy Spirit. But remember, we have to do our part. Let's read verse 8. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Amen? Amen. We all have to do our part, whether we're planting a seed or watering the plant. We're all one in Jesus, and God gives the increase. And here it says that we will receive a reward for our labor, for our work. Amen? Turn with me to Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. And it reads, 
And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. Okay? And so we'll all be judged for our works. And we'll be rewarded for our works. Scripture says that they will be burned with fire, tested with fire. And if they withstand the fire, you'll be blessed for those works. But if they get burned up, you won't be blessed for those works. That means if you're sharing the gospel for money, okay, and you're a true believer and you're living a good life, he says you won't lose your soul, but you're not going to get any rewards. You understand? But if you're doing it to save a soul, oh, brothers and sisters, many rewards are waiting for you in heaven. Amen? Amen. Okay, turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 7, and we'll read 18 and 19. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. All right, so brothers and sisters, it's very important that you bear fruit, good fruit. Once you become a Christian, you put on that name, you put on that breastplate of Christ. You must bear fruit. In Luke chapter 13, our Lord says that if you're not bearing fruit, you're wasting space on his ground and he will take you out. That's right. He will kill you. Because you're not working for him. You're not serving him. It's very important, brothers and sisters, that you bear fruit, that you serve him by sharing the gospel, ministering to people who he has drawn that come into your life, that the Lord draws to you personally. And the Holy Spirit will let you know and don't quench the Spirit. That's what it means by quench the Spirit. Speak out on God's behalf and have the love for that person to bring them to Christ so that they go to heaven and not to hell. Amen? Amen. Turn to the book of Galatians chapter 5 and reading verse 22. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, brothers and sisters, this is the fruits of the Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, you will have all of these attributes. If you don't have all of these attributes, you don't have the Holy Spirit yet. And only you and God know why. And it's probably you haven't given him 100%. Because many people want to hold back that one sin. And they think that it's okay and they're going to be worthy to receive the Holy Spirit. And they're not. Or they get filled with the Holy Spirit and they get choked by the thrones. Their seed falls on the side of the road and it choked the Holy Spirit out. So you have to give them all 100%. Doesn't mean you're not going to make a mistake. He knows we're going to make a mistake. Only Jesus walked the earth perfect without sin. But thank God we're saved by grace. Amen? And we ask for forgiveness when we make that mistake. And he forgives us. Amen? Amen. So if you know somebody close to you who is working towards repentance, being worthy to receive the Holy Spirit, you will see these fruits of the Spirit in them as they get closer and closer and you'll see all of them when they have the Holy Spirit in them. Turn to the last passage we'll read is in 2 Peter chapter 1 and we'll read verses 9 and 10 and Peter is he's reminded them of the fruits of the Spirit 
and how they have to have them. And this is what he says in verse 9. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. So brothers and sisters, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, and you have the fruits of the Spirit, and you're living Christ-like, you put on that breastplate of Christ, and you're letting your light shine, right? People have to know that you're a Christian. It should not be a surprise when they find that out. Amen? Amen. So continue bearing fruit and bringing others to Jesus. And we'll all be with our Lord and Savior someday in the paradise of heaven. Amen?